Hey, hi, hello friends. How's it going? Ash here. Welcome back to Gen Sense. It's time today to tackle the 20 most talked about, most hyped, most popular fragrance releases of the year. So this is not a list of what I consider the best releases of the year or anything like that. This is basically just a popularity contest from 20 up till number one, with number one being the most popular, biggest dist, baddest dist released. I'll have all of them linked down there in the description, so feel free to check them out down there. And uh, also a quick self-promotion type thing. These fragrances came out this year. Uh, eh. I creatively directed these two, West Loop Edge Water. I've got a few videos on my channel where I talk about them in more depth. You can find these in every Perfumania and every fragrance outlet store in the United States, so feel free to hop in there and check them out. Obviously, Edge Water in the green bottle here is more of a green, fresh fragrance. Nice, classy, easy wearing for spring and summertime. West Loop gonna be more of like a sexy compliment puller, sweet, warm, great for uh, fall and winter. And there's also these. Whoa! Oh, no, 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 wrong side. Tester sizes or travel sizes, 15 mils each. If you don't want to buy the full bottle, you can get a little one like this from Michael Malol's website. Again, linked in the description. All right, enough. Since we have so many fragrances, I'm gonna be a little bit quicker with them today. I also wanna let you guys know about a new code. It is GS25 or GS25. It is good for buy one, get one 25% off at FragFlex. FragFlex is run by the same people behind fragrancebuy.ca, so you know it's legit. And you can use that with uh, multiple fragrances. So if you bought like 10, then you would get five at 25% off. You see, you can, you can scale it. You can scale your savings. But wanna let you know about that because it just, started and uh, with all that out of the way it's time like breaking my desk over here my little whatever this thing is now i did a version of this a top 10 most popular back in october filmed it in october it came out in november but things have changed a bunch since then all right here we go number 20 bulgari man rain essence this one to me is uh Mediocre? I guess that's how I'd put it, mediocre. It's not a fragrance that smells bad or anything like that. It's just when you smell it, you go, oh, yeah. Clean, musky, little citrusy, <laughs> like a touch of tea. It's, it's fine, it's okay, it's good, it's not offensive, but it is forgettable to me. So seeing it down at number 20 makes sense, but truth be told, I think there are a bunch of fragrances that I would personally put above this one. For me, it's just, like I said, very forgettable, but, not bad smelling, to be fair. Number 19, Tom Ford Gray Vetiver Parfum. Oh, that's something that's like right up my alley. It's vetiver. Vetiver is something that I do enjoy quite a lot. Nice. While this is a very good vetiver, good quality, as you would expect from Tom Ford, it's also a Tom Ford and a parfum version of a Tom Ford, which means it is pricey. It actually reminds me a little bit if you took the previous iterations of gray vetiver and mixed it a little bit with like Guerlain vetiver. So you end up with a little bit more of a mature take on the gray vetiver DNA. And uh, while the quality is good and uh, the fragrance smells good to people that enjoy vetiver, I can see why it's down there, you know, toward the bottom of the top 20 because again, the price and it has a lot of competitors that I think more people would probably go for as far as vetiver scents goes. But if you're looking for a nice, classy, high-end designer vetiver fragrance, this is one of the better ones out there. Number 18 is Absolute Aventus. Oh, what did I just say about, about that being expensive? I take it back. So a uh, Grey Vetiver Parfum, about $190, which, yeah, that's, that's pretty pricey. Absolute Aventus, $545. Ouch. So yes, this is very, very pricey as Creed fragrances are at retail, uh, but it does smell nice, at least. I do like the changes to the Aventus DNA. It gives it, you know, a little interesting twist while still having that familiarity with the original. It has a versatility. It's very classy. It's just, is it worth that price point? For most people, the answer is gonna be no. But if you're a big fan of Creed or Aventus, it is worth checking out. I actually really enjoy the way it smells. It's just a tough pill to swallow when there's so many other fragrances out there that you could buy for what this one costs just by itself. It does smell good though. Number 17, Jean Lo Immortal. Maison Alhambra, this is a clone fragrance. It is a clone of Louis Vuitton's Le Mincite, and it is very good. <laughs> this stuff is amazing for the price point. So we went from something expensive to holy 
freaking crap expensive to, oh God, that costs nothing. Nice. Yeah, this thing you can find at discounters when it's in stock, often for under 30 bucks. I think that as of this video, when I'm filming it, it's like $25 at Joma Shop. And it is very close to the Louis Vuitton. So amazing bang for your buck. Very fresh, sweet, easy wearing, and the quality here is amazing for the price. Now I do want to put out a warning on this one though, okay? There are lots of fakes of this going around right now. You need to watch for, I'm just playing. <laughs> yeah, have me for a sec. Get people stirred up. They'll be like, oh my God, mine's a fake, I knew it. Just, that's not going on. The warning though that I want to give you on this one is at uh, eBay and places like that, there are scalpers galore on this one. Watch out for those dudes. Now I know that like 99% of you out there know this, but the one out of 100 of you that doesn't, I want you to know, okay, don't go to eBay and pay stupid prices for this. If you see this one being talked about, you think it sounds awesome and you really want it, wait until it's in stock. Buy it at Choma Shop, buy it at Fragrance, buy whatever, 25 bucks, 30 bucks, even a little bit over 30 bucks, it's fine. The quality here is worth it. But don't go to eBay and get ripped off, okay? Patience. Patience, guys. There are dudes on eBay asking for $150 for this. Do not buy that at $150, please. Ooh. <laughs> 150, scratch that, 390. Now, to be fair, nobody has purchased this from the listing, but you need to see this. Look at that. Look at it. This one, more than just about anything people are trying to rip you off on eBay, don't fall for it. After that, number 16, Spice Bomb Infrared Eau de Parfum. Solid release, easy wearing, good for compliments, nice for fall and winter time. A little bit more youthful than like the original Spice Bomb and Spice Bomb Extreme. Uh, so it's kind of following along with that more youthful lean that they've done uh, with their last couple of iterations of Spice Bomb. Infrared and night vision. It makes use of a lot of red notes in keeping with the red presentation, red style, infrared. Uh, like I said, if you're looking for something that's sweet, spicy, a little youthful and nice for compliments, this one would be a good choice. Number 15, Abbey Rouge, Rouge Privé from Guerlain, which is, uh, it's being propped up a bit by those uh, fragrance collectors, fragrance aficionados, fragrance freaks, which that, I mean, uh, <laughs> that's not me. I. I'm uh, okay. Yes, I, I did have this in my top 10 best releases of the year. That's that's true. Y yeah, so I guess that is me. The quality is amazing. It smells fantastic. The leather in there really well done. Similar, you know, to some of the fragrances that have come in the past in this line. I will say it's not going to appeal as much to your everyday person. You know, they're probably going to be looking at these other ones over here, other than maybe Grey Vetiver, and being like, oh yeah, these are these are way better than that. And then um, you know, your your fragrance critique type is going to come up and just be like. <laughs> Peasant. Oh, so love it, but it's probably not as much for your everyday person. What are we at now? 14 bottled elixir. Hugo Boss. This should be higher. I think it will be higher. I think as time goes on, this one creeps up, maybe eventually cracks that top 10. I could see that. Because this one right here is just so well done. One of my favorites of the year. I think I had it number four, and it was pretty comfortably there. Barely, barely didn't crack the top three. Yeah. But it smells amazing. Quality is fantastic. Much higher than you would expect from Hugo Boss with the Boss bottled fragrance. I think that held this one back a little bit. I think when it first came out, people were like, ah, Hugo Boss, Boss Bottled. They do like three of those a year and none of them were that good. And then as more people have smelled this, they've been like, oh wait, <laughs> I take that back. Holy Man, just smells so good. Really masculine, mass appealing, compliment getter, good performance, nice woody spicy. Mm, this is good stuff. At number 13, Prada Luna Rosa Ocean. Little blue fragrance action going for you right here. Uh, Luna Rosa Ocean Eau de Toilette and Eau de Parfum both I think are very solid. Blue fragrance is done in that Prada style. A little bit clean, classy. Not as aggressively in your face as some other popular blue fragrances out there. Uh, a little more subtle to an extent, but still nice compliment pours. I think if I were going to say one thing, uh, maybe not negatively, but have like a little critique for Luna Rosa Ocean, it would be that they maybe for some people don't have as much of like an instant wow factor as some of the blue fragrances that they're going up against. So what I mean by that is when you spray this on, give it a smell, super pleasant, easy wearing, like you would expect. But Blue de Chanel, Y Eau de Parfum, you know, Dior Sauvage. When you smell those, you immediately know, oh, that's Y, right? That's Blue de Chanel, you know. They have like that signature thing, that X factor to them. Luna Rosa Ocean, sometimes I feel for some people, falls a little bit short of that versus some of the, the big dogs that they're up against. But it is still great smelling, easy wearing, and very likable. Red number 12, Sunrise on the Red Sand Dunes from uh, Zara. 
And this one is also pretty much a clone fragrance. Now Zara basically, that's, that's what they do. They really just make clone fragrances by and large. And this is a clone of Louis Vuitton's Imagination. So we've got two Louis Vuitton clones here in the top 20. No Louis Vuittons, but two Louis Vuitton clones. And there's actually gonna be another Zara here in a moment. Uh, between the two, my own personal taste, I actually like this one more. I think it's a little bit better done. Just very nice citrus, extremely appealing, has like a little little spicy kick to it. The quality is pretty good on this one as well. Uh, so this I like. I don't know that I would put it absolutely not above bottled elixir or uh, this guy right here, or frankly that one, uh, or... I don't know if I'd put it over any of them, but it does smell very nice for the price. All right, we're at number 11. And number 11, when I did this back in October, was actually in the top 10. So this one has been dropping in terms of popularity. It's Guerlain's L'Homme Ideal Platine Privé. So this smells really similar to L'Homme Ideal Cologne, which came out years ago, was discontinued, and then they released this one, which smells really close to L'Homme Ideal Cologne. So in a way, it's like a reimagining of that scent to an extent. And I feel like when it first came out, it had a little more popularity, more push behind it because people who loved Low Midi All Cologne were like, oh, finally, like it's back, you know, we can buy this and it does just as well as that one. You know, it's, it's a great replacement for that one. And really with the tweaks made, it smells great in its own right as well. Yeah, I mean, I, I love the way it smells. As I said in my top 10 favorite releases of the year, I like this a lot. I think it smells fantastic. The only thing I would uh, rag on it for is being basically, a, you know, kind of reimagining re-release of Lomity All Cologne, but it still smells absolutely killer. So this one is fantastic. It has been though scooting down the list a bit. All right, we're in the top 10, we finally made it. Number 10 was not in the top 10 in October. So this one has been moving up and it is 1 million Royal. And I feel like this is a case of people originally maybe not liking it as much because it's 1 million, it's Paco Rabanne. They always get a bit of hate. Paco Rabanne fragrances always get a bit of hate when they come out. Yes, the bottles are tacky. Yes, the fragrances are usually loud. Yes, they're usually sweet. And that kind of, you know, tickles some people the wrong way. <laughs> and so uh, they get a lot of hate when they first come out. But what ends up happening is as time goes on, more people can try them. And then, you know, whether or not it's accepted past that point kind of tells what the popularity is going to be, if that makes any sense. So if you look on uh, Fragrantica, which is where I'm pulling these numbers from for today's video, uh, Paco Rabanne will always kind of get crapped on at first. But then as time goes, if more people smell them and they go, oh, this is good, it will slowly kind of creep up in the popularity rankings. Uh, if it's not that good, it'll kind of stay flat or go down a bit. And this one has been rising. And uh, actually I had a similar reaction to this one where as the year went on and I sprayed it on more and wore it a little bit, I grew to really appreciate this one. Had it in my top 10 of the year, number nine, and it's just really solid, well done. And and frankly, not as sweet as some Paco Rabanne fragrances have a tendency to be. Not that it isn't sweet, it is, just not as overdone as some are. Number nine was number seven before. So this one has been dropping as well. It's Sand Desert at Sunset, also from Zara. And this one is a clone of Angel Share from By Killian, actually the same perfumer that did Angel Share did this one. And uh, like I said, I, I think this right here, the sunrise on the red sand dunes is actually a bit better than Sand Desert at Sunset. Yeah, these these names. Now, once again, this does not smell bad. It doesn't smell offensive. Uh, the problem that I have with it is there are so many Angel Share clones on the market, and there are a bunch of them that I think are better than that one for less than that one. So, Kamra, Sharaf Blend by Zamaya, Ariz Intense, Cocktail Intense, I think are all better than this, and most of those you can get for cheaper than this. So that's why I would have it lower, but at number nine. Number eight was number six. So this one has also been dropping. It's Gentleman Society, and uh, I do wanna say something here about Gentleman Society. Uh, as I've referenced a couple times, I did a top 10 releases of the year, designer releases of the year, and I did not have Gentleman Society in that list, and as I thought about it, part of me wants to like amend the list a little bit. From number eight up to number one, all good. Not messing with that, not touching that, nothing with that. But I left out the scent magnetic, completely my fault. So I had looked on Fragrantica and searched only 2023 fragrances. And then I pulled all of those that I owned and I was going through them, smelling them and everything, trying to, you know, suss out the, the list and everything. And 
The Scent Magnetic was listed as a 2022 release, so it didn't pop up when I like pulled everything from Fragrantica, and that's my fault. I figured I would do it through Fragrantica that way because then I couldn't miss anything, and, th and then I ended up missing something. Because you know, all my fragrances are on shelves, so I'd have to go through and be like, oh, which ones were 2023? And I figured I would end up missing more of them that way than going to Fragrantica way. But all that's just to say the Scent Magnetic would have been in my top 10. I totally screwed that up, that's my fault. So the Scent Magnetic, it came out real early. <laughs> this year, but uh, I think that's why they had it 2022. It was like announced at the end of 2022 or something, but that one I would put probably number nine, which would move Lacoste off the list and would put 1 million Royal down at 10. And then Gentleman Society, you know, after I did the list, I went back and resprayed everything, smelled everything again, and I was like, Meh. Maybe I would bump that to 10 and move 1 million Royal down to 11, or I would put this at 11, but I should have at least mentioned it. I think the main reason that I did not in the in the list, and this is what makes me waffle on this one, is I feel like this is a step down from Reserve Privé. Up until Reserve Privé, it seemed like everyone got better, <laughs> or at least was as good. You know, Eau de Toilette Intense, nice. Was it? Nice. Reserve Privé, amazing. And then Gentleman Society comes out and it's like, huh, it's, it's not quite as good. And so it made me feel like, mm, does it deserve to be in the top 10 if it's actually worse than what came before it and also worse than what came before it and also worse what came before it. But it still is very nice smelling. It is gentlemanly. It's easy to wear, clean. Just a nice touch of sweetness there. Uh, so yeah, I still struggle with it. This is my mea culpa to Gentleman Society. I would put this in my top 10 probably right at 10 or 11 if I could do it over. Uh, but I was struggling with that, what I just mentioned when I made that list, where it was like, do I award this for being worse than the last three flankers that came before it in my mind? Or, you know, it would be like, uh, you know, Dior came out with Sauvage Elixir. Whoa, amazing. Then they come out with another flanker. Whoa, even better. Another one, whoa, even better. And then they come out with something that's worse than the last three. At that point, are you like, this is, it's pretty good, but honestly, it's a disappointment. But it is pretty good, but it is disappointing. <laughs> That's how I feel about this one. I do like it, actually, a lot, but I struggle sometimes with that, you know. Yeah, just with that. Number seven was number 10. So it's been moving up, and it is myself. I kind of predicted this one. Uh, I said in the video that I shot in October that I feel like this is going to creep up the rankings as time goes because it's the type of fragrance that's going to sell a lot, and it has been. Uh, if you check like Macy's bestsellers, this is typically number three or number four, basically just behind Sauvage and Bleu de Chanel. So it is that type of scent. You know, it's an everyday wear. It's a compliment monster. Like really, truly it is. Uh, at the same time, for people that are really into fragrances, it does come across boring or generic. But the reason I think it'll move up is because as it sells more and more and more and more, you're gonna have people who are maybe not huge fragrance people that go to Fragrantica and vote for this one or talk about it, which is going to bump it up. So it went from 10 to seven in two months. I would anticipate uh, that sometime next year, this cracks the top five. Uh, that would be my expectation. Number six was number five. So this one has bumped down. Why Eau de Parfum Intense. So this is another one that I like the smell of, but it's a little bit like Gentleman Society for me, where I enjoy it. I would recommend it to people for a number of different reasons, just like Gentleman Society. I would recommend that to people, absolutely, for a ton of different reasons. With this one, do I like it as much as Why Eau de Parfum? I don't, but I do think that it's a really well done scent, and uh, I think it has great compliment factor and versatility. You know, it's a little bit mature while still having a youthful edge to it. It's a solid fragrance, very solid, but I think that it's going to be supplanted by myself as time goes on. You know, they're gonna switch spots. I mean, they're already uh, this one's closer. Number five was number three. So it's moved down to Aqua de Jo Parfum, which it's, it's kind of interesting, but not unexpected. So this smells really close to Aqua de Jo Profumo. That's basically what this is. It's like a re-release of Aqua de Jo Profumo with some minor tweaks, you know, kind of like Platine Privé uh, over here is that with Lomity All Cologne. So this was number three has moved down and uh, it's just one of those deals where Aqua de Jo Profumo was like the number one fragrance 
for a long time that was being talked about on Fragrantica. It was always like in the most popular list. And then, you know, it was discontinued and replaced. And so the replacement is gonna obviously, especially being an Aqua de Jo, have a good amount of push behind it. But then at the same time, people are probably not gonna get crazy hyped about it because it is ultimately, you know, a re-release of something that has been out for a while or had been out for a while. It does smell great though, love this stuff. Number four was number two. So this one has also dropped and it's Invictus Victory Elixir, which I like a lot. This is one of my favorite releases of the year. Absolutely in love with it. It is, once again, a Paco Rabanne, so you know how that goes. This one is uh, just extremely well done, if you like sweet, sparkling vanilla scents. Yeah, that's just, that's my style. It is trending, obviously, as far as popularity goes, in the wrong direction, but still, to be in the top five of the year, that's pretty good. I like it just a little bit more than Invictus Victory. Uh, to date, this is my favorite Invictus fragrance, period. Number three was number four. So this one moved up one. Born in Roma, Intense from Valentino. I have harped on this, I have harped on this, I have harped on this. This is fantastic for getting positive attention. In the air, it is just one of the best of the year. This is another line, like Invictus, that frankly, I have not loved. Born in Roma, as it's gone on, has gotten better. I feel like the flankers that have come out after the original Born in Roma are all great. And I would still recommend Born in Roma to a bunch of people, just because I personally, don't really like it, you know, wouldn't wear it, doesn't mean I'm not gonna tell you who it would be good for, you know? It's a really versatile scent. Younger guys can pull it off, nice and sweet, attention grabbing, a little bit like a more mineral uh, version of Invictus, an Invictus with more minerality, that would have been better. But this is just icing on the cake, love it. This one's another one of my favorites of the year. Now, number two was number eight, so yeah. Parfums and Marley. PDM, Altair, this thing is just alt. It's number two, it moved up six. So that thing right there is just motoring, motoring. And I can see why, I can see why. When I first sprayed this one on, like first impressions, I thought it was, uh, you know, pretty good, but it also reminded me of like bits and pieces of maybe 10 different things out there. But it is one of those scents that as you wear it, it smells much better. And I don't know if it's in my head or not, but I feel like, you know, I've had this a, a little while now. I feel like the fragrance smells better <laughs> than when I first got it. Like when I first got this one in, to me, it smelled much more synthetic. When I first sprayed it on, like almost, you know, syrupy, chemically sweet, candy sweet. But now it smells much more defined. Like that synthetic edge is gone and it's replaced with a gourmand kind of feel. Almost edible with just like baking spices and sweetness and warmth. And it just smells way better. And not that long ago, I did a top 15 PDM uh, fragrances and this one I had like right in the middle number eight I think I had it below like Sedley, Percival, Herod, Leighton, Leighton Exclusive, Carlisle, and uh, Wajon I think I don't know there may have been like one other one also I'm not sure how many I just listed off but I'm telling you I may be tempted to bump this up as time goes and it, you know I could see this in my own personal rankings like jumping up above Sedley and Percival. I, I, it's not gonna beat Leighton or Leighton Exclusive for Herod but you know time goes man I could see this kind of sneaking up into the top six or something like that. So this is a fragrance that I think as time goes you get used to it either it mine matured or whatever or just got used to it but it does smell better to me now. Number one which is not a surprise. Lamal Elixir, this was also number one. Back in October, I feel like this will be number one, period. So this was one of the only ones that really didn't move or shake at all, you know? Everything else is moving down a little bit, moving up a little bit. Uh, you know, this one fell out of the top 10, but Lamal Elixir, step past number one. And I agree, my favorite release of the year. This stuff is just killer. If you haven't smelled it for some reason, you need to smell it. It is classy, sexy, warm, perfect. <laughs> it's just the best in the Lamal line, in my opinion. Uh, just great release. So there we go. Top 20. There are some here, you know, that I would move around, obviously, in my own personal rankings, but um, it makes a lot of sense when you look at it. For one reason or another, I think, uh, again, some of these are going to move up, some of these are going to move down, and, um, you know, a year from now, I think it's going to be a really different kind of look. Again, I want to reiterate 
<laughs> that um, the Scent Magnetic would have been in my top 10 and that uh, Gentleman Society, I, I don't know if I would have put that in over 1 million royal, but I do feel like I should have mentioned uh, that it was just on the cusp, so. Sorry about that guy. All right guys, that'll do it for me. Let me know what you think about this. Let me know which ones you think are gonna go up, which ones are gonna go down, and uh, how this is gonna shake out long-term, because long-term is really where it's at. Like which ones of these are gonna be the ones that 10 years from now, people are saying, oh, that release was absolutely magnificent. Because that's really the, the thing, like, how many of these have staying power that are gonna leave an impact? For better or for worse, I mean, you know, people hated Sauvage when it came out, right? A lot of people in the fragrance community, but that's had an impact. So does myself have the ability to make a big impact like that? Lamal Elixir, the PDM, you know, do any of these? That's the question. Thank you guys for hanging with me. Stay safe out there. See you tomorrow with another fragrance.